Good afternoon. I, I'm Pastor Mike Killinger. I have the privilege of serving across town at Bethel and also the, the joyful privilege of being able to, to be here with you as well this afternoon as we continue to, to follow our Savior's steps as he gets closer and closer to the way of the cross. We've been worshiping this Lenten season with the theme of cross words, and we'll, we'll talk about one of those cross words as we progress through our service. We begin, however, this afternoon with verses, selected verses from hymn 396, Christ the Life of All the Living. <laughs> Please stand. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To herald your love in the morning. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, 
in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. You may be seated. Our service continues with our psalm, Psalm 2. Let us pray. Lord, keep us safe in the refuge of your anointed Son, so that when the nations rage against him, we are not terrified. You have begotten him from eternity and have seated him on your throne in heaven. Let us see him as he truly is, the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Yeah. 
We hear the next portion of our Savior and his journey to the cross for us and for our salvation, recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 1 through 26. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and elders of the people reached the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him led him away, and handed him over to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he felt remorse. He brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders and said, I've sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? That's your problem. He threw the pieces of silver into the temple and left. Then he went out and hanged himself. The chief priests took the pieces of silver and said, It's not lawful to put these into the treasury since it's blood money. They reached a decision to buy the potter's field with the money as a burial place for foreigners. So that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price the sons of Israel had set for him, and they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord commanded me. When Jesus stood in the presence of the governor, the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Don't you hear how many things they're testifying against you? But he did not answer him, not even one word, so that the governor was very surprised. At the time of the festival, the governor had a custom to release to the crowd any one prisoner they wanted. At that time, they were holding a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So when they were assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew that they had handed Jesus over to him because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, Pilate's wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man, she said, since I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus put to death. The governor asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, they said. Pilate said to them that what should I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said to him, Crucify him. But the governor said, Why? 
What has he done wrong? But they kept shouting even louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing and that instead it was turning into a riot, he took water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. Is your responsibility. And all the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. This is the word of our God. We continue with our next hymn. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is God's servant to bring us to justification. Amen. Particular portion of God's word for us today as we consider the next crossword in our, our Lent series. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11. 
after his soul experiences anguish, he will see the light of life. He will provide satisfaction. Through their knowledge of him, my just servant will justify the many, for he himself carried their guilt. This is the word of our God. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, as we, we've already noted a couple of times during our service, our, our theme this year has been cross words, looking at different words that relate to what is happening at the cross for us. We have before us today a 13-letter word for a declaration of not guilty. That word is justification. But before we, we spend too much time on cross words, I'd like for a moment for us to think uh, about cross roads. We, we use that term in a couple of different senses. We, we use it sometimes in the, the physical sense, the, the literal sense. I'm trying to give directions to someone or, or they're trying to give directions to me. And they're, they're trying to tell me that you, you go down this road and, and you go until you hit the, the cross road, the, the road that crosses it, and that's, that's where you turn right. And, and then you go down about a mile or so, and, and then you'll see what you're looking for on the right. Two, lo- two roads literally cross as someone is traveling from one place to another. But we take that, that literal idea of being on a road and we bring it over into situations in life where we have a couple of different choices, a couple of different directions that we might go. We say we're, we're, at, a, we're at a crossroads in our career. Do I, do I take the promotion? Or do I take that other job offer for that other company? We, we reach that, that crossroads in, in our school career. I've, I've just graduated high school, and I, I've got my, my first choice I, I've been accepted to. I, I've got this other choice that I've also been accepted to. Which, which way do I go? Which crossroad do I follow? You've got two things that, for at least a few moments, are, are occupying the same place. Where things go from there is yet to be decided, but at the moment, there there are two things that are kind of right on top of each other. This particular crossword shows us something similar. Because in justification, we have two things, God's justice, God's holiness, God's righteousness, being in the same place and at the same time as His mercy and His love and His compassion. We're told, my just servant will justify the many. A just servant. Someone who is going to be a servant of the Lord, someone who is going to serve God's version of justice not ours. When, when we use that word justify or justification outside of our maybe church walls, we're not necessarily using that, that theological, that, that church way of thinking about justification. More, more often, it's being used in the sense of a defense or an explanation or maybe even an excuse been called into your supervisor's office at work, been called into the principal's office at school, got pulled over by the state trooper. What's your justification? Explain what you did. Explain why you did what you did. All right, what's your justification? We, we use that phrase to describe those situations. 
But we can't use it that way with God. Or I should say we can attempt to, but it's not really going to work. Because there is no defense. There is no explanation. There's no thing that we can say to God, no way that we can can express it to Him that is going to make it okay that we've lived lives of wickedness and rebellion and sin. There's no justifying it. There's no way that we can say to God, oh God, you're... You're, you're going to kind of laugh once I tell you this one, but, but, but here's why I did the exact opposite of what you told me to do. There's no scenario, no situation where God's going to go, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Don't, don't worry about it. My just servant. If God followed His justice completely, If God simply looked at the world of sinners and said they've gone astray, they've done the things that they weren't supposed to do and reacted, none of us would survive. None of us would make it through. But God promises that when this just servant comes, he comes to justify the many to provide a defense, to provide something that the Lord will accept. For he himself carried their guilt. That's what counts before God. That's what makes a difference before God. Not any sort of thing that we could try to explain or, or kind of approach God thinking him the, the way that, that some people want to as, as that kindly grandpa guy up there in heaven kind of looking down on the world and going, oh, those people that I made just getting into mischief again. No. Someone who is completely holy, completely righteous, completely just, and yet this servant comes to carry the guilt. He's the one who comes to provide satisfaction. And so those two things do meet. They do meet up at the cross. God gets to be the one who is who He is, the one who is perfectly holy, the one who is perfectly righteous, the one who allows no sin to enter His presence, the one who justly judges all sin. And at the same time, That loving Heavenly Father who does throw open His arms wide and say, draw near, you who are dearly loved. Come and receive all the the joy and the blessings that have been laid aside for you. Come and take up residence in your heavenly home. The cross is where God's justice and His mercy meet. Because there is a justification There is a defense. Jesus stands before his heavenly Father and says, yes, they have done these things, but I've paid for them. I've taken care of it through my suffering on the cross. God then gets to provide justification. When someone looks at this situation and and says, these people have sinned, these people have gone astray, how how can God let them into his heaven? God's explanation is it's been paid for. It's been taken care of. The judgment falls, just not on them. It's an important thing for us to remember during this, this season of Lent. As we see our Savior Jesus there on the cross, beaten and bloodied, made fun of, disregarded. It brings a seriousness, a solemnness to to this time of year, and, and rightly so, when we see how much it really costs Jesus to be able to forgive us. 
But we hear something else that the Savior is promised to do. After his soul experiences anguish, he will see the light of life. Yes, his soul will experience anguish. And we, we heard it again in our lesson for this evening, our Passion History lesson. As Jesus stands on trial, unjust though it is. But we're told he himself carried their guilt. That's a past tense verb. Not he carries their guilt. Not he's still carrying their guilt to this day. His soul experienced the anguish. They laid his body in the tomb. Stay there for those three days. But then he comes back. And that's really what we're doing during these weeks as we look at these crosswords. We're preparing our hearts. We're preparing our minds. We're looking forward to that joyful celebration. God's justice and mercy met at the cross. He occupied the same place at the same time for a while. And now through faith in Him, we can look forward to having only God say to us, You are forgiven. You are not guilty. You've been justified. So when we think about the end, when we think about the the coming of Judgment Day, when we think about standing before God's throne someday and having God ask us, why should I let you into heaven? What's your justification for that? We don't have to worry about that day. We don't have to be afraid and say, what am I going to answer? I don't know. God has already given it to us. He's already told us what the answer is. The justification is there in Christ Jesus our Lord. The one who laid down his life. The one who rose again. The one who made satisfaction. This word then carries the weight of all of our hopes for heaven. That in the cross and in the person of Jesus, God's justice and mercy meet. Thanks be to God for this cross word, justification. Amen. Please stand. Now may that peace of God which goes beyond all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated for the collection of the offering.
Please stand for prayer. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Good afternoon. Just uh, a couple of things. First of all, thank you to our 7th and 8th graders for, for bringing your music into our, our service this afternoon. Your, your, your efforts are, are appreciated. As far as congregational announcements, nothing in particular other than a reminder that our, our meal continues here after the, the service, after you're dismissed. And uh, in connection with that, we will take a, a moment to, to thank the Lord for the, the food and the, the fellowship that we're about to share together. Let's take a moment to pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to, to come together and worship, to, to hear your word and to sing your praises. We thank you for showing us the, the truth about your Son, who is the, the perfect sacrifice in our place. We thank you also for the opportunity to, to share life together and to, and to be able to spend time in, in fellowship with one another. Hear us as we, we pray the common table prayers. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. We're, we're starting to, to draw to a close now on this season of Lent, but certainly my prayer and the prayer of your fellow believers over at Bethel, the Lord continues to, to bless your, your, your time between now and, and Holy Week. <laughs> 